Hi, welcome back to Flywheel Films. So, I'm a liar, but top down, I don't really care about having CarPlay or a better user interface. Turns out I did want the creature comforts associated with a CarPlay, head unit, and a backup camera. I found a lightly used one which helped offset the price, so I just couldn't afford a full priced one. So maybe I'm not a liar? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're still a liar. So consider this an overview of what I bought and why I bought it. Be sure to check out my other video on the actual installation process in the NC Miata. So in my case, I got a lightly used head unit installed with microphone, steering wheel control adapter, parking brake bypass, and a backup camera. Why? Why not? So I did not do the full-on infamous Bose sectomy. Ergo, I kept the factory amp and speakers. Obviously, they're not the best, but they are better than the base model stereo. And with all the raw noises this car makes, especially top-down, you don't really get as many gains going full audiophile. Allow me to introduce the Sony XAV AX5000. This is a capacitive touchscreen multimedia unit. No CD player, no HDMI or secondary camera input, but it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it's a capacitive screen, so it met all my needs. As you can see, it's pretty responsive. You'll see both capacitive and resistive screens offered in head units. Capacitive uses the energy from your fingers, whereas resistive relies on actual physical pressure. I really wanted capacitive, as they are typically better and more responsive. There's a reason all touchscreen phones and tablets nowadays are capacitive. But there are good resistive screens out there. Just do your research and find one that suits your needs and your budget. Things you will interact with on the Sony side are things like the EQ and Bluetooth settings. They're very easy and very customizable. Um, speaking of, it sounds a lot better than the stock system, even using the stock amp and speakers. So speaking of CarPlay, it's pretty much life-changing, and it comes up really fast with this system. You just plug your phone in, and then it's there. So this is CarPlay with the iOS 14 beta, with the new wallpaper screen in the background, and Siri and phone calls are less obtrusive now. Yeah, never mind. Okay. Wireless CarPlay would be nice, but there are wireless dongle options for about 150 bucks that let you go wireless. However, it is nice to not worry about battery life, charging your phone every single drive. We'll see if I get tired of plugging it in every time. As you can see, the screen is decent. Not full HD, but honestly, you don't really notice any pixel grain in a car from normal viewing distance. It's not exactly bright enough to be seen in direct sunlight with the roof down, but again, finding a super bright, nicer head unit is probably multiple price brackets higher. So you can pull up the reverse camera on the head unit and watch it while you're driving forward but only if you wire it to be always on. Some cameras aren't made to be always on, and I don't think this cheap little Amazon one is one of those. So I wired it to the reverse lights, thus it only comes on when reversing. It's a nice little camera, I've been pretty impressed with it. It uh, just attaches behind the license plate and it looks almost OEM. Even has these little bright LEDs which do help with the rear visibility. Um, both the head unit and the camera had backup reverse guidelines. The cameras are just static and look terrible, but there's a little green wire that you can actually cut, so I cut that immediately. The head unit has adjustable guidelines, so you can actually figure out how wide they need to be, how narrow the top needs to be, and that'll tell you where your tire tracks are going to go. So as you might have seen in the installation video, wiring this reverse camera was a total pain. Just getting it from the head unit all the way back here, underneath all the power retractable hardware. If I had to do it again, I would look into a wireless camera option. I know there's a bunch out there, and I hear they're pretty decent. So there you have it, a fantastic addition to any Miata, especially the NC. Don't be afraid if you're seeing head units above budget. Just check out the used market, there's a lot of great options. If the install seems daunting, don't worry, take it one step at a time. Definitely go check out my other video of the actual installation with all the specifics, a lot of which can be applied to any Miata. Well, that's all folks. Leave a like if you like and subscribe for more car content. Leave a comment on what your favorite head unit is or let me know if you have any questions. Peace.